Hello, my name is Robert. Welcome to the second video in the course where we are learning about business strategy. Now, this entire first module is going to talk about um, strategic position. At first, whatever business strategy we are trying to develop, it's important to understand where we are right now. What is our position? We need to do this prior that we start to develop plans, how we move forward. So understanding of where we are is very important. It should always come first. And um, for this first module, we are going to revolve around the simple concept or this picture. You are going to see the entire module. This is about what is surrounding every organization. So if you imagine organization right around it are going to be its competitors. Then slightly outward, there will be an industry or a sector. And the most outer layer is the macro environment. For each of these, you have several models developed by scholars that can be very well used for analyzing the environment, the, the, the industry, the competitors, and so on. We will pick the PESTEL framework for analyzing the macro environment, and then we will pick Porter's Five Forces Analysis to understand the, the industry within which every organization operates. And on the most inner level, we will pick Blue Ocean Thinking, so three very interesting concepts and models. So let's go straight ahead into analyzing macro environment by using the PESTEL framework. All right, let's analyze the macro environment using the PESTEL framework. Now, before we go into this, these really are very general factors or general forces that are influencing us. And in some of them, you will see that they are not influencing us directly, but indirectly. So PESTEL is sort of an abbreviation because we talk about political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal forces. Let's list some brief examples uh, for each of these. Imagine we have a travel agency and we are working with a, within a tourism industry. So say within political forces, well, we would have government support. All of a sudden, government started to support travel agencies and we are getting some sort of subsidies. If we travel with our clients, uh, within uh, the geographical region of given government. So they're supporting domestic travel. Well, we will of course follow this because it can provide us better profits. See, it's a force from the government that is influencing our business directly. Uh, for economic forces, we can imagine national growth rates. Uh, say we are operating within three geographical regions, within three countries. Each of them has different national growth rate. One of them has been doing particularly well and the purchasing power has increased. Well, we can focus our resources within this region because this region, according to the purchasing power, can yield us the largest profits. Thirdly, we have some social forces. Imagine there has been an analysis that has shown that the travel by elder people has been on the rise. So they have saved a lot of money during their work life. And now they are in their 50s or 60s. They would like to travel a lot. They could be great potential customers for us. And as this is an uptrend, we can try to follow it and again, uh, get some revenues on it. Fourthly, uh, te technological changes. Say if we have a travel agency, uh, maybe there are new kinds of security checks that we can follow or we should follow. It's given by government that every customer should go through a thorough security check. So we purchase the newest technology and whenever we onboard a customer on our uh, travel bus <laughs> or sightseeing bus, it runs through this special sort of technological security check. It's actually quite hard to find uh, some technological force within here. Fifthly, we have environmental changes. Maybe you can have energy consumption controls. Say there is a regulation that says only a certain energy or certain amount of pollution can be generated for every person's travel. So we will need to think about, hmm, if we travel 500 kilometers with our customers, should we travel with them by plane or by bus? Plane uh, creates more pollution, bus uh, consumes, say, more overall energy. So maybe we will have to adjust our travel packages accordingly, according to this environmental change or environmental force. Now, lastly, we have some legal forces or legal restrictions. Maybe the government where we operate, there is a new law that restricts mergers and acquisitions. 
we have been very successful travel agency and we would like to purchase another travel agency, which is our competitor. But the law will not allow us to do so because this acquisition would create a too big of a monopoly within a given region. So we will not be able to do so. You see, these were six examples for the PESTEL framework. All right, so we have seen the basic outline of the PESTEL framework. <laughs> if we were following it, we could identify hundreds of forces and factors that are influencing our business within these six major areas. However, listing hundreds of these forces is not the point of PESTEL framework. And I see uh, this mistake actually being done quite often by, by business students who pick a PESTEL framework as their model to go uh, for some business analysis, and then they are listing and listing all these forces. However, it should be about listing of key factors or key factors for change within our business. So key factors for change are environmental factors that are likely to have an impact on the success or failure of strategy. So we have, as a, as a business developers, defined ourselves this is the strategy that we would like to go for. We are identifying our starting position where we are right now using the PESTEL framework. We should identify two or three of these major PESTEL forces that are influencing our strategy. So let's imagine we are a multinational corporation which is operating globally. We have tens of thousands of employees. What could be the key factors that can PESTEL framework provide us with? First one of them can be geoeconomic shift. This is a factor of how does uh, purchasing power or economical power move around geographically. Maybe, uh, say if we have a geographical region, people are moving to the cities and cities are rising in their purchasing power while the rural areas are being lower and lower on the purchasing levels. So this is a geoeconomic shift. And the question for us is whether this geoeconomic shift is going to be fast or slow. So it's two alternatives within given key factor for change. Second key factor can be financial coordination. So say we are operating within European Union and now it's a question whether the financial coordination of states where we operate and European Union in general is going to be a sort of well or fast developed and implemented, or it's going to be slow development of financial coordination. And actually, the regions are not going to coordinate that much. There is, for instance, a region, if we talk about travel agency, within Denmark and Sweden, which are connected through Oresund Bridge. And these two regions cooperate a lot, even though they are within two countries. So if we're operating within this region, we can count with high level of financial coordination. If we're operating in other region, it would be considered low level financial coordination. So you see, we have two uh, factors identified by PESTEL framework and two alternatives for each of these factors. Now, once we identify these factors, we can start to go for development of scenarios. So we can do some simple sort of matrix where on the left side, we are going to have either the harmonized financial coordination or discordant. And on the top, we are going to have slow geoeconomic shift or rapid geoeconomic shift, exactly as we talked about. Now, for each one of these, we are going to develop a scenario. What would happen? What should we do if, say, rapid uh, geoeconomic shift is happening and there is a discordant financial coordination, meaning the regions are not cooperating that well on the financial side. We would go for financial regionalism. I'm not going to talk through these scenarios. This would be too detailed explanation. And of course, it's going to be very different for each analysis. So let's stay here. If you get to this point that you develop the PESTEL frameworks basics, you identify key factors for change, you identify the alternatives within these key factors, and you are actually able to list the scenarios that would happen, you, are, you have done a very good job at identifying the macro environment forces that are surrounding your organization. Now for the final point 
What should we do? We should identify impacts of these. I have actually seen business analysis where for each of these scenarios, financial impacts were very well calculated or predicted. Of course, it can never be accurate. But imagine if we keep this matrix and we would be able to assign sort of a figure uh, based on our profits to each one of these. So say within a scenario that we are going into rapid geoeconomic shift, in general, we are going to be much more in a profit compared to slow geoeconomic shift. So this is an impact analysis and that is a topic maybe for another video. So I think I will stop over here. So in this video, we have talked about the PESTEL framework, which is usually used for analysis of macro environment uh, of any organization that is out there. And I'm hoping to see you in the upcoming videos where we will touch upon Porter's Five Forces Framework. That is, again, a very interesting topic.